Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? And welcome to another edition of the State of the Saints podcast, where we talk New Orleans Saints. My name is TJ Jones. Thanks for checking out the podcast. I really do appreciate it. And normally on a podcast, you know, I roll in here alone. I'm a one-man army. Y'all know how I do it. <laughs> but this edition, I decided to bring some backup, and I brought someone that I love and respect. And I have to say he is one of the main reasons why I love the Saints and sports as a whole. Um, it is my older brother uh, and somebody that, you know, I want you all to give a warm welcome to, Mr. E.J. Jones. What's going on, E? Man, what's up, man? How y'all doing? What's up, who that's? How y'all doing? Man, first off, I want to say thank you uh, for taking the time out to be a part of the podcast. And I really mean that, man. You're one of the main reasons why I love to do sports so much. I remember, uh, you know, those summers when we used to sit at home, you know, because mama was a teacher and uh, she used to be in summer school. And me and you going to stores and picking up those college football magazines. And, you you know, we kind of quizzing each other about players and what school they went to. So I really enjoy those times, man. And we also had some dark times, didn't we, when we watched these Saints games, you know, before they start winning every year, right? <laughs> yeah, plenty of them. I remember the bags. <laughs> I wanted to put a plastic bag on the <laughs> I think we all did. We're going to share some stories, you know, probably down the line on another edition about some of the things that we went through as Saints fans. But uh, today, E, we got to talk about the game. I mean, the 24-hour rule um, has come and gone. New Orleans Saints – uh, suffered their only second loss of the season against the Dallas Cowboys. Now, first off, I think we both can agree with this, E. Uh, we understood that the Saints can't win them all. But for them to lose to the Dallas Cowboys, come on, man. I know you had to be upset about that, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, I was kind of upset. You know, I, I like the Cowboys. Like, I like, you know, vinegar with ice cream. <laughs> you know, I, don't, I don't like them too much. So, but like you said, it's only one loss. Absolutely. It feels like. 10 and 2, for goodness sake, so, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure the who that's don't, you know, take that loss, they take it to scribe, pretty much. Yeah, absolutely, and, you know, that goes to show you how spoiled we have gotten as uh, fans of the Saints, right? These guys have won 10 straight games after losing week one, and we're upset like they just lost in the playoffs. You know, that goes to show you how spoiled mm -hmm. we have gotten. But let's go ahead and break this game down. There was some good in this game, and there was some bad and on the last edition, I talked about um, the Saints. After they watch this, they need to burn this tape. Uh, but before they burn this tape, and we burn this tape out of our minds, um, let's go ahead and talk about some of the good. Now, we have to start with Cameron Jordan. I think Cameron Jordan was probably the, one of the brightest spots of this game, um, despite the Saints losing. What did you see from Cameron Jordan, and do you think that he – Act, um, kind of stepped up and moved up to almost like that elite status when it comes to pass rushes. Uh, I thought Cam Jordan was elite long before this Cowboys game. I mm. mean, he ain't really changed my mind about him. I mean, you already know what kind of player he is. Yeah. Um, that defense is, is is really stepping up. Yeah. And I think out of every game film, you can. I'm a Clint Eastwood fan, so. Every game feel win or lose, you can take the good, bad, and the ugly. <laughs> the, the good is that defense. I mean, mm -hmm. that defense is they, they stepping up. They looking like the Saints. They couldn't win a playoff game in the nineties. That's how they looking though. Yeah. But Cam Jordan, I mean, he if you don't have him in your top ten as far as like a defensive end, a top five, he's flirting with that right now. Yeah, I, I he, agree. He got to be crazy. Yeah, I absolutely agree, man. Cam Jordan, I mean, he had two and a half sacks in this game, and um, you, you you have to respect. Um, his motor, man. Man, Cameron Jordan, a lot of people don't understand this. Cameron Jordan rarely ever leaves the field. I mean, he plays like 90 plus percent of the snaps. You see different players going to rotation. You know, I mean, you got your, your NASCAR package when you're doing blitzing. I mean, you got your, your different uh, coverages. Um, but Cam Jordan never leaves the field, and you have to respect a person that that is on the field every single play, man. But um, Cam Jordan, he definitely stood out in this game. And I also thought that the Saints' uh, defense as a whole stood out. I mean, they registered seven sacks and two forced fumbles. But let's move forward to some of the bad. We have to focus on the elephant in the room, or should I say the apple in the room. Eli Apple, man. Eli Apple, um, he definitely uh, then put some of his best work on tape against the Dallas Cowboys. What did they do? And I'm talking to Dallas Cowboys. What did they do to 
um, really just throw Eli Apple off his game? Well, it's simple. Uh, in the NFL, you're going to play zone mm -hmm. or you can play man-to-man. -man. Right. They say he thrives in man-to-man, -man, but I guess struggles in zone. Yeah. So I'm assuming he's one of those aggressive type cornerbacks mm -hmm. but they already knew the book on eli apple saying that though he came from the giants so they so, so wait they so just, so they knew the book of eli right <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah so they, they, they did know the book of eli i'm sorry man uh, i know that was a dad yeah. joke but i couldn't resist go, go ahead uh -huh. <laughs> go ahead yeah, left it out there <laughs> oh, shoot. yeah they 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 did they knew all about eli apple pretty much yeah and they just went here first at him you know they wasn't gonna go at Lattimore too much mm -hmm. they spots for him yeah but yeah if they had crawley out there they would have did the same thing to him but soon as they, they knew eli apple on tape yeah and but the cowboys other than amari cooper i mean what would you rate the wide receivers maybe c c students if they was in class i guess but still I yeah mean, they got some speed out there yeah absolutely so, yeah, I mean, you look at Eli Apple, man. I didn't, I didn't um, really judge him too much on this game. I mean, the first half he looked horrible. I mean, I think we can agree with that. But in the second half, he kind of stepped up, man. You know, he didn't give up yeah, any big yeah. plays. He made the adjustments, and that goes to show you uh, what type of young man that he is. I mean, he's smart. A lot of players, um, a lot of players, they go out there and they get beat, and they let it get to them. What I can respect about this New Orleans Saints team is no matter if they get beaten, I'm talking about the secondary, rather you talk about Eli Apple or P.J. Williams who had his struggle uh, towards the beginning of the season, they seem to have amnesia. And it, in order for you to be a, a good or even a great NFL player, you got to have amnesia. I, I look at somebody like Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck is a guy who goes out there and, and may throw an interception or two, but it's not going to stop him from going out there and, and throwing the ball. I mean, he basically... Uh, eliminates that uh, that turnover out of his mind and he just goes out there and continue to play. That's why I can respect um, the Saints secondary, even though you know they're probably going to give up some plays every now and then, but they keep battling, man. And like you said, Eli Apple played for the Giants the beginning of his career. The first three years of his career, he was a Giant. And that was a divisional foe of the, of the Dallas Cowboys. So you know that they knew his tendencies and and they knew that they can probably pick at him. So I, I don't take it. I don't look at Eli Apple any differently. I know a lot of people were talking about, you know, why do we trade for him? I mean, er, I mean, everybody has a bad game. And speaking of bad games, we got to talk about Drew Brees, man. Not some of his best work either. So what do you think about Drew Brees? Um, and what did the defense of the Dallas Cowboys do to rattle the the MVP candidate? I mean, it, it, it's Whenever Drew has a bad game, it's always attributed to the defensive line and the offensive line pretty much. Either you blitz him or your line, which our offensive line seems to be outstanding, but we mm -hmm. got knocked back down early in this Dallas game. Yeah. I mean, it was bringing pressure. You had Demarcus Lawrence. I mean, you had uh, some good uh, defensive end they had out there. I forget that guy's name, but he had these guys on each side right. leading up at the quarterback. Yeah. Then you had to push in the middle. That was uh, coming after him. So, yeah. if you get in Drew Brees' face, obviously he's on the size for a quarterback. You got yeah. six, four, six, five guys just running at him. I mean, we had Bush Riley tried the best he can, but boy, he was getting beat like a Persian rug out there a lot of the time. <laughs> so, all of that's a tribute to Drew Brees not having a good game. But mm -hmm. some plays, he just like the last interception. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's a, that was a throw that probably shouldn't even been through. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he couldn't have got that to that guy if he was six foot five. So. He shouldn't have threw that fast. Well, according to the, the interview with Drew Brees, he said he was trying to throw the ball um, at the feet. But the pressure that was in his face, he, he kind of miscalculated the throw. And um, he, he threw it a little high in order for the cornerback to make a play. But that was a good play by the cornerback. I know who that nation members don't want to hear that, but that was a good play, man. Everybody's not going to make that play. Good instincts uh, by the corner. Uh, but this wasn't Drew Brees' best work. Um, you know, and like you said, offensive line, probably the worst game they played all season. Um, Jemiah Bushride, let's let's just be honest, man. He is no Teron Armstead. And I'm not going to take anything from Bushride because, I mean, guy's a Super Bowl champion, man. This is his second stint with the Saints. But he's also, you know, on the other side of 30, man. You're not going to have classic Jemiah Bushride because, honestly, if you had classic Jemiah Bushride, he wouldn't be a Saint right now, man. It's the reason why he left the Saints in the first place and played for the Bears. It's because of his incredible play. Um, the Bears threw the money at him. 
So you have to respect Jamai Bush, right? I mean, he's only doing what he can, but Teron Armstead, man, he's special. Teron Armstead, according to Pro Football Focus, is ranked number one at his position. I mean, so, you know, for you to be the best left tackle in all the football, man, I mean, there's not many people like you, man. But the Saints did lose this game 13-10 to 10, uh, before we uh, close it out. Um, what have we learned about this team, and um, how do you see – the Saints uh, going forward. Well, they always say you learn more uh, in a loss than you would in a win. Mm-hmm. Now, depending on how you look at it, it's like a, almost like a glass half full, glass half empty type thing. Yeah. But I think they learned a lot about themselves. Right. I think they learned about that they can't underestimate any team. Mm-hmm. I don't think they can think they can't be beaten. Mm-hmm. I think Sean Payne going to use that game as a, like a wake up call. Absolutely. Obviously, Terrell Austin, he, he's going to be back. Mm-hmm. And as bad as the Saints played Thursday night, they only lost by three points. Yep. The defense, like I said, that was the very good of the game. The bad is, you know, it was the offense. Right. That was what's inspired. But the fact of the matter is, you still got to play between the hashes. Yeah. And they didn't. So mm-hmm. they just had to, you know, get back on their horses, forget about that. Like you said, 24 hour rule. Yeah. Get back on there and get ready for Tampa Bay. Yeah. You still got a lot to play for. And Absolutely. 10 and 2. Yeah. The season isn't over. Cow- the Cowboys truthfully, had more to play for in that game. Yeah, absolutely, man. I'm, look, I, I look, I, I understand, once again, who that nation is upset because nobody liked the Dallas Cowboys. They get all of this media attention, only won two playoff games in 23 years, and I can understand people's frustration because nobody wants to lose to the Cowboys. It's rather two things. It's rather you're a Cowboy Nation member and you want to see them win every game, or you watch the Cowboys to see them lose by 30 points. That is... That is the recipe. I mean, that's what's up. You know, <laughs> with everybody, uh, that's how everybody looks at the Dallas Cowboys. But once you you hit the nail on the head, the Dallas Cowboys they played inspired football. I I, I go back to uh, the game where the the Superdome reopened um, back in 2006, and New Orleans Saints played the Atlanta Falcons. It was something special in the atmosphere, and I think that if the Saints played the 85 Bears, they probably would have won that game. You know, they, they laid it all out there. And when you see the Dallas Cowboys, once again, they were fighting for their playoff lives. They Jerry Jones uh, challenged his team. He even brought back the 1993 Super Bowl team and honored them at halftime. He did everything he can possibly do in order to rally the troops in order for them to get this win. And sometimes, you know, it's just not your night. But like you said, the defense played outstanding. The Dallas Cowboys threw everything they possibly could at the Saints, and they only had 13 points to show for it. So in that dark cloud, you have to say that was a silver lining.